Hi, this is Mama Dr. Tocha with today's class on how to know if you have been called by a deity, an orisha, uh, by, you know, a god, a goddess. How do you know for sure that you are being called into service? How do you know that you're being called to work with this deity or this super level spirit guide? I encourage you to go get the drink, get the snack, get your notebook, get your pen. We're going to have us some forbidden knowledge, stuff that people won't tell you that you can do and know by yourself. Thank you for coming back. Let's get into today's class. A lot of people wonder, should they work with a deity? What is a deity? What is a god? What is a goddess? And are there any benefits that come from working with these higher level spirit guides? If you want to know about different spirit guides, I encourage you to go watch my video, Who Else Is With Us Here? I also encourage you to go watch my videos on Are You Spiritually Gifted? Uh, spiritually gifted children. Have you been called to be a spiritual practitioner? These are helpful videos here in my YouTube channel that will help you better understand today's class. Now, when you are being called by a deity or let me call them a super level spirit guide, there are several unmistakable signs that you will get. And it is in your interest not to disregard these signs. You may have unusual or fantastic dreams. Some people do report that when they keep ignoring these dreams, these dreams can literally become nightmares. And this is the attempt by this high level spur guy to get your attention. It's not to destroy you, it's not to take you out, it's to do something drastic to at, uh, attract your attention. There are some people who also realize this call through flashbacks. Uh, they have flashbacks of their past life, past incarnations. Uh, they may get that while they're sleeping. They may even get that while they're awake. They may get that through what we call past life regression sessions where they go uh, and speak with somebody who is an expert in past life regression. And when they start regressing to their past lives, lives that they had before they were born in this incarnation, they realize that in these past lives, they used to work with these deities. And when they come out of that regression, they just have this sense of longing. Oh my goodness, I need to reconnect. Even sometimes during the past life regression, they might be able to recall past conversations past discussions and agreements and covenants they had with this higher level spirit guides where they agreed with those spirit guides that when they reincarnate again here that they will continue the work that they uh, used to do in that life or in previous lives there are some people who connect with deities through an intense desire to serve that deity. So it is not someone just saying, well, I think it's sexy. This Orisha looks sexy or this deity sounds sexy. Well, I just went on Google and Googled Hecate and, you know, it looks like she's powerful. Let me go and align myself with her. No, 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 no. There are some people that maybe through their meditation, through their work, uh, through inner work, shadow work, they start having an inner, it, 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 you know, arises from the inside to start working with, to start aligning with very specific higher level spirit guides. When this desire starts emerging, such people are advised to go and confirm this through divination or confirm this through uh, connecting with spiritual uh, practitioners who are gifted in communicating with the other side. So just don't assume that, you know, you went to a store and you saw a statue of, you know, a deity and you're like, okay, that looks pretty. If I put her or him on my altar, I guess, you know, then we'll start doing something. No, 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 no. It doesn't work 
that way, okay? Now, there are uh, some people who it is in their lineage to work with certain deities or to work with certain gods and goddesses, okay? And they will see symbols of this deity around them in the physical. So let's say, for instance, it's a, a deity uh, represented by a snake. They will always have snakes around them, snakes in the backyard, snakes in the front yard, snakes showing up on their computer. They're looking through something and then boom, something about snakes comes up. Um, you know, snakes swimming in their swimming pool <laughs> and, and things of that nature, snakes in unusual places. That is also a good opportunity to go get a divination and say, why am I seeing these symbols? Now, I'm just using snake as an example. Please do not think that all water spur guides are represented by snakes. No, they're not. I'm just using that as an example. Uh, a lot of these deities or higher level spirit guides can use animal symbols or animal symbolisms or, or animal totems to make themselves known and make themselves, um, yeah, make themselves known and also make known their intentions. The time that these deities or higher level spirit guides start making themselves known varies from person to person. Sometimes they will start coming to you when you're a child. Sometimes they come to you when you're a teenager. Sometimes they'll come to you as an adult. Depending on the agreement or the covenant it has with your lineage. If this is showing up in your lineage, you're seeing certain symbols like there's the sun or the lion or the snake or the crocodile or the spider or the eagle. And this, this symbol is constantly repeating itself. You know, you're always seeing a pot, you're always seeing a flower or a certain specific flower or butterfly, something like that. Get a divination, find out what's going on and take immediate action. Even if your current family is religious and they have lost those roots, don't be lazy. Do the research. Start tracking your heritage. Start asking questions. You might have extended far family relatives who are actually maintaining the spiritual tradition in your lineage. And you will find out that once you start um, aligning yourself with these things, you will start e experiencing exponentially improved spiritual communication experiences, your material circumstances will improve. And talking about spiritual uh, material circumstances, a lot of people who are called by deities and refuse to answer the call of these deities can end up suffering material losses. Depending on what the agreement is with that deity, they can even sustain physical injury, okay? Even more than material losses. They could lose their businesses. They will lose their jobs. They'll be humiliated and embarrassed at every turn. Nothing they do works, you know? They're surrounded by failure all around. They're involved in mind-boggling addictions that don't even make sense. So again, doing a divination, find a, a reputable spiritual practitioner around you who can confirm these things through a divination. Just don't assume that a deity is calling you. Another thing that comes up is, can you call yourself? Well, the general rule is no, but there are exceptions to the rule like I mentioned before. If there's this intense desire that wells up within you to work with a specific deity. But understand that you need to be in alignment with your spiritual crew first before you can be in alignment with this deity and start seeing changes in your life. Also remember that when you are called to work with a deity, if you're working with a deity, you have to do the work of the deity according to the way the deity wants that work to be done. You can't be aligned with the deity and doing things your way. 
and being obstinate and saying, well, uh, well, I'm not going to make animal offerings. I'm a vegan or I'm not going to go to the water. I hate going into water. If that's what the deity wants, that's what you need to be doing. Okay. There are some people that say, uh, well, I don't want anything to do with the deity. I've gotten the calls. I'm getting, uh, you know, all the signals. You would have to go to a spiritual practitioner to resolve that and to do certain rituals to separate you from that deity. You cannot stay in your home and separate your deity with ordinary invocations and screaming and shouting, casting and binding. It will not work. You need to get specific spiritual rituals done that satisfy the deity and break that covenant between your lineage, yourself, and that deity, or that higher level spirit guide. So I hope you've learned something from this class. I know that it's very little information, or maybe not so little information, but insufficient um, information for a lot of people. I encourage you to go to my website, check out spiritual practice coaching. If you have things that I identified, if you're experiencing the things I identified in this, in this class, spiritual practice coaching might be helpful for you to help you resolve that and be in alignment to these deities or this higher level spirit guide so that your life can astronomically, exponentially improve. Also on my website, you will see where you can book me for divinations, consultations, sign up for my online courses in spirituality, get my eBooks. There's so many resources, soaps and chalks and candles, ritual candles, so many things on my channel that can help you with your spiritual life. Okay. Don't be in the dark. Equip yourself with what you need to know. Remember to give me a thumbs up because that encourages me to produce more content like this. I encourage you to subscribe. And if you see the join button below this video, hit that button, become a member and get more than just these free YouTube videos. We're thankful to our creator, our guardian spirits, our ancestors, our spirit guides, a higher level spirit guide to work with us. We're so thankful. We're so grateful for this knowledge of spiritual things. Ashe.